JHK here for the South China Morning Post, SCMP MMA. And joining me right now is Hong Kong's finest, Sasha Palatnikov. Sasha, what's going on, man? How's uh, life treating you? Uh, good, man. Everything is good. Um, less than a month to the fight, so, you know, it's time to do media, so here we are. There you go. There you go. Now, you say less than a month to go. How has this camp been compared to previous camps? Um... It's been good. Um, ever since my last fight, I haven't really, you know, even the fight itself, uh, it didn't feel like a fight. I didn't really have any time off, so I've just been training since then. And and then once the uh, the call up came for the fight, the matchup came. Uh, that's when you know I was like, all right, I'm ready. Never got out of shape. I've been in shape, so. No, you know, I feel strong. I feel like I'm in good shape. Like I said, I'm a month out, so. No, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling confident. Um, the last time out was a uh, was it was a weird one. I didn't feel feel like myself. I felt a bit laggy. I think it was the timing, just fighting at 8:30 in the morning. It was something that uh, I don't know. My body just didn't feel turned on. So it was just something that I don't know. Now looking back, I kind of understand uh, how I need to be uh, literally the moment I'm going out there instead of being feeling a little bit tired. Um, but you know, no excuses. You know, that was just something I, I had a different kind of mindset, vision for the fight, and I thought it was going to go a different way. And, and it became a wrestling match. And I didn't think, uh, I thought Impa would come out and we would be, you know, putting on a bit of a war. But, um, you know, it happened the way it did, and, and, and it's a good lesson. So now I'm ready to come out and uh, get the result done on the 21st. Is that the biggest learning lesson from the fight? Is that you expected something? and it didn't happen that way absolutely um i was like obviously running on a running on a high from the result of my debut so um you know i thought everything in terms of my takedown defense and everything was just on point so when i went went in there i kind of expected oh he's a 185 or coming down he's probably going to want to bang a little bit he's going to want to throw hands but uh he didn't do much of that and then it became just kind of a a wild scramble of a fight, which I didn't anticipate, but at the same time, uh, I should have. And, uh, and I think it caught me. I, 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 was, I was too, like, uh, passive, um, and, uh, and it caught me. So uh, it's like getting caught with a punch. I got caught with a, with a choke, and, and uh, it was just a weird angle. And, and I, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for a long time, and kudos to my opponent. He was able to just get it right on the money and get it right in there. And... I, uh, I kind of felt like I was checkmated at that moment and, and tapped. So, you know, he got me on that. But, you know, nine times out of ten, I feel like, uh, you know, it's a different fight every time. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling really good. This is a good matchup against the guy who's uh, coming off of a tough loss himself. So, you know, he's going to be wanting to get his first UFC win. He's going to also be fighting for his job, potentially, and, and so am I. So these are just things that uh, I'm sure are going to bring even more intensity to the fight. And, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm ready for it. In that last fight, you know what I mean, the first five minutes, do you go back and watch that? Or is that something that you don't even play with and you just kind of put it in the rearview mirror and, and just leave it there in the past? Um, at this point, yeah, I, I, I've watched it um, several times already, uh, and and like I said, it, it was a good uh, good, I guess, blueprint on on, on being uh, passive in the fight. Like I said, letting everything come to me, um, which is kind of what was the game plan. You know, we wanted uh, wanted him to exert a lot of energy and go out there and, and kind of wear him out and. After actually the first round, we thought he, he, we did a pretty good job of that. I, I didn't feel any, I took any damage. Um, but uh, like I said, it was just kind of became a crazy scramble of a fight. And he got his little his little incident to get the neck and got it. And, and, and that was that. But now moving forward, look, we just move forward. We're, we're only getting better every day. And, and, um, and it was just a small blip in the road. That's why I feel like, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be like a delusional guy like O'Malley, but... Um, you know, a loss is a loss, but I feel like even the UFC themselves didn't put a lot of light on this fight. I don't think they necessarily thought it was uh, what they expected the fight to be like as well, considering my debut and, and some of the fights that Impa had had himself. So I think they were also pretty eager to get me back in there and hopefully get, get in something exciting going again, because I think they have a little bit of an idea of what I can do and, and the way that I can open up, especially striking. So, you know, I'm expecting kind of the same thing 
for my opponent. He saw kind of the blueprint on how to beat me. So, uh, you know, this camp, I've been working a lot with Frank Hickman. Uh, he's actually my roommate right now. So, you know, Frank. And, uh, um, you know, I've been working a lot on my wrestling and, and just, just tighten up with these little little holes that, that got exposed in the last fight. Um, like I said, I was running on a high and, and I, I maybe neglected a couple things going into that camp. So, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't done that. So now we're focusing on everything and making sure uh, we're ready to go. Besides the wrestling aspect of it, when you step back into the gym after the fight, you said you didn't even take any time off. You get you regroup with your coach, and what do you guys discuss moving forward? Um, it's just being consistent. It's 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 uh it's just getting in a good groove and and just getting in on the mats every single day. Uh, prior in that last camp, I was dealing with a couple injuries and little things like that. So I was trying to just make sure that I was 100% in my body going into that fight. But at the same time, I made some sacrifices that maybe I should have been, you know, on the mats doing more wrestling uh, leading up for But Because in my mind, I really didn't believe that it was going to involve as much wrestling as it did. Uh, I truly was like, okay, we're going out there and we're going to have a bit of a war because I just thought, I don't know. I just thought he was a bigger guy coming down. It was a dumb assumption to make, but it's one I did. And, um, and, and now I know, like, you know, if there's a road and there's a way to go, people will take it and, and they'll get that win. So, you know, credit to, to my, my, my former opponent and his team because they, they game plan well. Um, and uh, I assume, like I said, that the similar game plan will be run. And, and my coach just said, as long as you're wrestling, I'm wrestling like three, four times a week now. So just trying to be active. Uh, nothing is new. So we're just actively working, drilling every day. And, uh, you know, going from where I love to be striking and, and being on my back and getting back up and, and going back to it is, is the most important thing. I think not only for myself, but for the people that are watching as well, they don't want to see me on my back. They, they, they want to see two guys throwing hands. So I think that's going to be the most important thing. And I think that will happen. Yeah, you, you mentioned Frank. I just saw that he became one of the wrestling coaches at Syndicate. And then you have him as your roommate. That's just like... That's really having someone there to help you with your wrestling, man. There's a guy living with you, and he could just give you tips. You guys could just get onto the floor and just start discussing moves, kind of getting into positions while watching fights, right? No, absolutely. Um, there's multiple times. I mean, we were just watching the fights this weekend, and um, there was a certain position that I saw, and you know, just kind of going over things. And even for myself, like I'm not necessarily someone who's constantly thinking about grappling situations, so just to have them constantly kind of refreshed in my mind. And I'm going over some stuff with, with my former coaches uh, and, and, their, and, their, and their kind of, you know, programs and just watching some of their film and just keeping my mind refreshed. Like, I already know how to strike. It's not like I'm going to forget how to do it. So I'm just kind of putting myself uh, and just getting my mind open and, and uh, just being ready for anything, you know, anything that can come. Because, you know, nowadays in fights, anything is possible. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm... Uh, covering all those bases, being diligent in, in what I do. And uh, I think it's going to show on the 21st. Syndicate, man, it just has so many fighters. And it's not just UFC fighters, just fighters from all over the world and many major promotions. For yourself, being in that grind every day, man, and you've been there for a while now, what what has it done for you? What it, Has it changed you any? Oh, no, for sure. I mean, uh like there's been there's been like different periods in my career when I've uh, you know I've trained with featherweights getting ready for 85 title fights. So um, you know you've always had to kind of make do with what you had. And having Tiger back then was like the mecca for Asia, for at least for me, and, and getting good looks and, and, and high level uh, you know um, sparring. But uh, since coming out to Vegas, um, you know since you know with COVID, there's been a lot of a lot of high-level fighters in Las Vegas, and and just recently in the last, like I would say, two three months, there's been a big influx of 170 guys, which is great. And uh, and we're not just talking like oh 170 fighters, we're talking like high-level ranked 170-pound fighters in the UFC, multiple wins. So um, these guys are like you just don't get an easy round off. There's no easy round off. Like when it's sparring day, every round is a a legitimate killer. So it's something that. I thrive, I, I enjoy because I know I'm not going to get that challenge anywhere else. And, you know, when I get ready for my fights, it's it's like, okay, I'm fighting the same guy three rounds. So I know exactly what to expect versus, you know, I'm tired. Wait, no, I can't be tired. I've got Michael Piazza on my leg now. And then next round, Daniel Rodriguez is punching me in the head. 
and then you got Strickland screaming at you. So, you know, you got all these uh, elements that I think uh, challenge you mentally and physically uh, day in and day out of the gym. So, like I said, it's all about preparing yourself for that one night. And I feel like I have all the tools and, and all the support here that uh, I could possibly need to be successful when I can compete. Yeah, Daniel Rodriguez just got a big win, I believe knockout, right? And you were part yeah. of his camp. Is that is that yeah. is that the situation? And then Michael Chiesa is there right now with you. How has it been with Chiesa? You know, I mean, he has a huge fight coming up with Luke. Yeah, um, you know, Chiesa's super super uh, challenging guy. Uh, you know, someone that I've watched since I was young, and, and watching him win the Ultimate Fighter, and he's a super nice guy and. You know, we've sparred a bunch of rounds and got in our wrestling. He's a very strong grappler, and um, it's able to. It's, I've been able to learn a lot about myself in certain areas, and, 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 and I ask him questions. And you know, it's just it's good to just kind of have that outlook because he's a he's a guy that I'd like to be. You know, someone with a number by my name one day. So I definitely like to ask questions and, and just to see like how how I feel. Like I ask him, how do you feel when we're in these clinch situations or when we're striking? So. We're under the same manager, so everything is, is cool, and everyone I train with is, like, good, you know, like, good vibes. Like, nobody's like, oh, like, you're a welterweight still. You know, it's like everyone's, like, trying to get better, and, um, yeah, I, I think the vibe and the environment, at least on paper and, and in front of everyone, looks great. I mean, we're all getting good work, and, and like like I said, I could complain. The workplace is a good environment right now, and uh, I'm, I'm, I got no complaints. Everything's kind of fitting into place, and... Uh, like I said, I'm excited for the 21st. Yeah, it's a great barometer for you, right? To have someone like Kiesa with the name, with the number next to his name, it it must kind of build confidence heading into this fight more than anything. No, oh, for sure, absolutely. I mean, like like my day to day now is like every you know with going to the PI and and, and going to my gym. You know, inter everyone I interact with is a UFC fighter, and it's like it's just become like a it's a normal thing, but. You know, looking back just maybe a year and a half ago, I was, uh, you know, having a really hard time finding anyone in my weight class, let alone above, you know, 185. So it's 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 a blessing, you know, but it's also at the same time dangerous because, <laughs> you know, you have to also be on it. You can't take a second off with these guys because they will uh, they'll eat you up. So, you know, it, it just keeps you on your toes. It pushes you. And then, like you said, it's motivating. It's a, it's it knows how it, it gives you that reading of how far you are and, and, and how far you need to go in order to, to go where you want to go. So um, having people like that, you know, you see the champ and gone and just walking around all the time. So there's just, you know, you know, these kinds of things always help, you know, day in and day out. You return August 21st against Ramiz Brahima. What is your breakdown of him and, and what type of fighter he is? Um, you know, from what it, what I see, he, for at least from the beginning of his career or, or, you know, the more recent before he went to the UFC, he was, uh, you know, big in the grappling, taking people's, uh, taking people's necks, you know, going away with the submission. So he got into that run and then he made his UFC debut. Um, but he fought, he had a tough fight against, uh, Max Griffin and, you know, Griffin fought him smart, uh, hit, you know, hit and move. I feel like he's, uh, he's probably going to be looking for the takedown again. I watched a little bit of his film and. He'll probably look to strike to get into something, maybe a body lock, something of that like. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't see really, I don't see any areas that I think he's going to trouble me standing personally. Um, I feel like they're going to really try to put pressure on me, make me fight on the back foot. But um, but yeah, otherwise from that, I'm expecting a grappler uh, who's probably got some pretty decent power in his hands if he lands, as does anyone. Um, and someone who plots forward, probably put a lot of pressure, and he's going to have, uh, you know, pressure to get the result too. So I feel like um, someone who'll come out eager, he'll come out, come out strong. So I'm ready. It's going to be fun. I think it's going to be. I don't think it'll be the first fight of the card, which will be good as well. I think we'll probably be like third or fourth. So it'll be a nice time in the afternoon when my uh, hormones are firing. So it's going to be good. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a fun fight for sure. When you dissect his debut against Max Griffin and look at the style that you bring the the path to victory is is pretty clear do you think yeah i mean when i watched that fight and uh i i, I remember watching that fight live um you know obviously with no idea i was like you know, who knows maybe i'll fight that guy but um but looking at it now i said max Payne. you know he gave me his blueprint on how to beat him 
and um, stylistically it, very, it fits my, my style very well. Um, so it was definitely something I, I said if I'd be fighting him, I'd fight the same way. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that I've definitely thought about. Um, and I'm assuming, uh, you know, most people will expect the same kind of thing seeing my debut as well. Okay, he likes to fight on the outside, move and, and, and use footwork. So unless he's, uh, you know, really put a lot of time on, a, on his, his footwork and ring control, I feel like it'll be a similar kind of night for him. So what is the the outlook what what do you expect out of yourself in this fight compared to your first two i expect a lot of power i expect uh my shots to be a lot more dangerous early on um i feel i feel fast i feel explosive i'm a little bit heavier um you know i like i said when i first joined the ufc they told me i had a good 10 pounds that i could gain um so my strength and conditioning coach has been uh helping me a lot with that, you know, so I just feel like I pack a punch, I'm going to have good movement, um, going to be, I just feel like I'm going to be hard to hit, um, and uh, it's just going to be, I'm going to feel really like it's my coming out party, because uh, the last one was a bit of a hiccup, so this one will be the one where uh, people will kind of like, oh yeah, I remember that guy, so hopefully uh, get some attention back. <laughs> they're, they're slowly adding seats to the Apex, and you are a a Las Vegas based fighter. So you could have a little, you know, a little crowd for you in that arena. Um, how different is it going to be for you to have people actually cheering or even booing, man? It doesn't really matter. No, for sure. That was uh, something I was hoping for um, when this was originally announced. All like maybe there'll be an uh, audience, maybe there'll be people. And I miss it. I miss, I haven't fought in front of an audience since fighting in Korea, actually. So. Um, I miss it. I, I, I think it adds another level of energy uh, that you can't get without fans and, and just the noise and atmosphere that it brings is something that I think is uh, you can't get anywhere else uh, without fans. So, I mean, it'll be nice. You know, as I seen this in the stands, they got like a couple stands set up and I heard some potential there could be more. So, of course, that's nice. Always nice to have. But I mean, it, the goal is, is to be fighting in a sold out arena with that kind of atmosphere. But um, I've been lucky to, to fight in some pretty awesome crowded places. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of phase all of that out when you're in the cage and focus on the one thing in front of you. So whatever happens, happens in terms of if, if there's an audience. But I'm, if I have to vote for it, I'm always going to say I want fans. I like fans always. With the welterweight division, right, you, you're right there training with Michael Chiesa. And, and he's going to face Luque, Vicente Luque. What do you see in that fight? You have a good insider perspective on on the training right now. It's uh, it's your good old-fashioned striker versus grappler. Um, that'll be the question, you know. But don't get me wrong, you know, Kies is also, he's, he's long and he's a rangy striker. He's not, he's not just going to only just chase the grappling, but... Um, if it was the simple, you know, simple way, yeah, you got your striker versus grappler. I would say Kies is the longer, taller fighter, and you know he moves. He he's, he moves well, uh, Kiesa. Uh, he does move well. He's not someone easy to hit, um, and uh, he's got good cardio, good wrestling, good grappling. Obviously, if he gets you in some of those positions against the cage, like he did against Magni, like you're not going to get out of them. Uh, he's super strong, and like I said, he's long and he's got a sharp grappling uh, base and. You know, I've I've trained with Vicente uh, back at the Black Zillions, and he's he's good everywhere. You know, he's he's a very strong striker, very uh, you know strong kickboxing uh, background, and um, you know he's got submissions to his name too. So it's on paper, like I said, it's it's a tough fight. Uh, I think it's a tough fight for both fighters. It's going to be a close one, and it's going to be kind of a can he do this or can he do that? And, and the only way to know is uh, when they close the octagon uh, when they fight. But I'm excited for that fight. That's a good card uh, coming up uh, in a couple weeks, so it should be good. Yeah, inside the is it is it in Houston, right? Am I correct? It's in Houston. Yeah, in Houston. Yeah, so it's gonna be crazy. Don and Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Um, another uh, another welterweight matchup that's getting a lot of attention is the return of Nick Diaz against Robbie Lawler, man. And Robbie Lawler, you know, he's lost a bunch in a row, but they're to the best guys in the division. Uh, he's older. Nick Diaz is older. He's coming back after six years away. Like, how do you see that fight playing out? You're interested in it. Are you interested in it? Some people seem like they're not. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not, not going to watch it. Um, but, you know, it doesn't have the, I guess, it's not as enticing as, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to be the main event of a pay-per-view and I'm going to pay, you know, $65 for it. But, you know, if it's on, I'm going to definitely watch it. And, uh, you know, Nick Diaz has a big following, so he's always going to bring eyes. And um, Lawler's a former champ, and they had a war already, and that was an exciting fight. So I don't see what's wrong with it. And, uh, I'm, I think I think if, if, if Diaz is taking his training serious, which I hear he is, and, and so is, you know, Lawler seems to be his, his, his self, I mean, I think I think Diaz will win. I don't know. I think Diaz will come back and, and maybe just, uh, you know, outbox him um, and, uh, and probably finish him. I don't know. I really don't know. But that would be kind of epic if he did. You know, like that would be the way to come back from six years off off of what a marijuana suspension um, to come back and do that and then maybe get another big fight. Who knows? I mean, I don't know his mindset. I don't know how he's thinking, but. Um, I've been a fan of the Diaz brothers, so to see him fight again would, would definitely be cool. You know, I watched them when they fought in, uh, was it Strike Force they yeah. fought? Yeah. Yeah. So I remember watching that fight. So, yeah, it'll be like, uh, it'll be like uh, revisiting an old memory. So why not? <laughs> um, one last thing, Ben. When are you going to uh, head back to Hong Kong? Do you have any plans for that? Man, whenever I don't have to do a three week quarantine. <laughs> Whenever that gets lifted, um, I'm waiting on that, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm still also waiting on my fiance to be able to come to the U.S. We're waiting on that as well. So, yeah, one step at a time, I guess. I mean, everything's like I haven't seen my parents. I haven't seen my, my family in a while because of the travel restrictions. So we're just kind of waiting to see what the update is. Um, obviously, like everybody's quarantined, but I'm uh, sorry, uh, vaccinated, but uh we're just trying to figure out uh, whenever it's like we don't have to spend our own money to stay in a hotel for no reason. So, yeah, as it is the same in Korea, right? It's like two weeks. So, yeah, it's just it's not something that I want to do. I think it's just a waste of time. It takes time away from my training. Like this is just yeah, you know what I mean? It's not ideal. So no, definitely not ideal at this moment. But yeah, we'll wait and see. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some changes, and then and then I'll be able to, you know, jump on it. I have to go back before uh, 19, 20, 21. So yeah, by November, technically speaking, mm -hmm. to renew my ID. So we'll see. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, anyways, man, you're you're back in action August 21st in Las Vegas, UFC Fight Night. Thank you, Sasha, for the time, man, and uh, always good catching up. Thank you. Always good, brother. Stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with a word.